Welcome to Softree. This is Erin. Now we're going to go through a tutorial on working with LiDAR. Light direction and ranging surveys, also known as LiDAR, produce very large amounts of relatively accurate three-dimensional point data. The data includes points representing laser light scattered from the ground, including bare earth, foliage, buildings, transmission lines, and other objects. This data is usually broken into tiles, each containing a few million points. RoadEng is limited to approximately 5 million points. Interpolating LiDAR into regular grid format is not recommended because this creates additional points by interpolation, resulting in some lost accuracy. For accuracy purposes, it is better to work with the raw data points. When importing LiDAR data, it is very important to group points together instead of making each point an individual feature. Doing this saves memory, because if a feature is attached to many individual points, you will end up with thousands of features, and this will take a long time to load. By grouping points into features, the memory used for that feature is shared by many points. Finally, it is not uncommon to have data sets with hundreds of millions of points, well exceeding the recommended maximum of 5 million points. This limitation is generally not a problem for most corridor projects if points outside the area of interest are thinned. Consider a relatively large road project, say 20 kilometers or 12 miles long. Assume that your LiDAR horizontal resolution is 1 meter or 3 feet and that you have identified a corridor that is 200 meters or approximately 656 feet wide along a preliminary alignment. This is going to yield about 4 million data points, staying within the recommended maximum of 5 million. Now, let's jump into the software and take a look at working with LiDAR. Large data sets need to be loaded in such a way that they use the least amount of memory possible. In this tutorial, we're going to load a prepared LiDAR import format from an IOP, or Input Output Parameters file. Through the Module Setup menu, we're going to open the Terrain Setup dialog box. Here, through the Import tab, we're going to press the Merge button and browse to find our pre-prepared Import Options file. Let's start by setting up a linear corridor feature. We'll import a proposed alignment for our road center line. Now, let's import our two LiDAR data files. Our files have approximately 700,000 points. For the purposes of this tutorial, we've kept it to a relatively low number, just to keep the tutorial quick and fast. The import options that we set up in our IOP file are presented in this next dialog box. First, let's start off on the Test tab. As we can see, the file looks like it's showing the correct values. This indicates the options that are set up in the Structure tab are working correctly. There are several other import options that have been set up to avoid using more memory than necessary. The first of these is also found in the Structure tab. You can see that there are no attributes defined in the Column Assignment section. The next rule that's been set up for our import is that our feature size has been limited. There are two rules that have been set up on our Code tab. The first is to not make every point into a separate feature. So for that, our Connected property is turned off. Our next rule is to not attach symbols to every point. So you'll see that here, symbols just find are none. Our final step here in our import options dialog box is on our selection tab. Here, we're going to add a filtering region around our corridor. The corridor width needs to be adjusted to 200. This is going to allow us to include all the data points within our corridor region. Outside of that corridor region, we'll have our default, and we're going to adjust this to have the points thinned so that 9 out of every 10 points are not shown.
it will take a couple of minutes to import about 70,000 points out of the 700,000 available. And here it is, our imported data, showing full point density along the corridor and reduced density outside. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for joining us.